Hi and welcome to Phase 2 in how to fit an E3D V6 to your DaVinci 1.0. In this video, it's going to be pretty short because there's not a lot to cover. Um, <laughs> this is pretty much the, these are the parts you need to print out and these are the parts that you need to buy before we tear the printer down because if you tear the printer down first, then you can't print the parts you need to mount the hot end. So yeah, you need to do this now, okay? In the previous phase we assembled the e3d v6 hot end i hope you had more luck assembling yours than i did have mine because it was a bit fiddly but hopefully you spotted that sorted out and and now you've got an assembled e3d e3d v6 hot end can't even speak today so you're going to need a file off thingiverse i'm going to put the link in the description okay and it's going to be four parts four parts one file i think it comes in one file if not, you just have to print out four parts. And those four parts are a spacer, a mount, a clamp, and a drill guide. Okay, and I'm going to show you what they're like. So, this is the spacer. Uh, all my parts are going to be bright orange, by the way. Um, because when I'm finished modifying the printer, I'm going to show like vi uh, video and probably photos of the printer. So, that everything that's in, in there that's bright orange is going to be anything that I've modified. So, the spacer... I don't know if you can see kind of what it's like. It's just a spacer. It's just a flat piece with a bump in. And it's got three holes in. Okay. That's important. So you print that out. This is the mount. Try it, Try and get it out of the way of my face. I'll show you each level. Now, the mount has a gap here. But I've had to modify it and kind of file a gap into it here. Because it, it, it does need a little bit of a recess in there. So... Um, just something to be careful of. If, if you don't, when you try and mount it, you'll see that the disc colours down here as if it's going to snap off. But just file a little bit away. I just use an emery board. You know, it doesn't take two seconds. So that's what the mount looks like. Okay. It's got the 6 milli half in there and four holes. And for, for the other part of the mount is the clamp. There you go. Two holes in it. Now, what I had to do with this as well, I had to take the emery board and just rub it down here because when I clamped it together with the other part, that's upside down, with the other part of the mount of that, I can see you, when I clamped it there, it didn't kind of like grip the E3D V6 properly, it still turned inside, so I had to, with a, with a, with a bit of emery, emery board and now it grips fine. And lastly is the drill guide. Now this thing just has a whole lot of holes in. It has a half moon in the top. So you will need to drill three holes, these three holes in the middle, and you will need to do some kind of modification to get this cut out into the carriage. I've already done that in my carriage. Don't worry about it. It's nothing serious. We're just going to step by step it. The, the holes are 3.5 millimeter or whatever imperial equivalent that's going to be. Uh, I can't work that out in my head. Um, but yeah, three holes. Two saw cuts, and that's all I did. You'll see when we strip it down that um, that it's it's perfectly fine. Now you can probably hear in the background that the printer's going crazy. It's it's printing out something because, as you can see, I've now got light. I've now got a background, and it it all looks and feels a whole lot better. So hopefully these videos are going to get better. Um, I'm going to try and do something with this microphone to try and make it so I don't have to have it like shoved into my face to get it working properly. But that's it. So they're the, print, they're the parts you need to print. Um, the print is still working, so all this is fully reversible. You can probably hear it. You will need to buy two fixings, okay? Just two. Now, you probably pick these up on eBay or, you know, somewhere else. They are M3 by 35mm long, okay? That's all you need. And you just need to... I had to buy 10. The, the eBay seller had, had 10, so I bought 10. And, and this one's pretty cool because they're all socket cap head. Um, that just means they've got like a, a hex socket in the top and you get an Allen wrench with each bag. I also bought some M3x10s, M3x12s, excuse me, just to replace what's in there because they're all T10, T15 torques in the printer at the moment and I don't like that, I don't like them fixings. So as we go, I'm going to rip out the torques and I'm going to put in um, socket caps so I can just use the little, the little Allen key to sort it out. So that's pretty much it. I'm not going to say much more in this video. 
the last video went on for far too long. <laughs> it was so simple to assemble the E3D. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it was 40 minutes. It was just a long time. So this video is literally just don't tear pr your printer apart yet. Yeah, you need to print these parts and you need to buy some fixings. I don't want you to get to the assembly stage of this thing and think, I haven't got all the bits, you know, and my printer's in bits now, so I can't do anything with it. So you need to print out that file. That's the four parts. We need to uh, get some M3 by 35 fixings, just two. I mean, I buy 10. And, and that's it. Then we can move on to phase three. Um, what else one I was going to say? I was going to say something else. Oh, yes, yes. From phase one, I've had a couple of comments from people asking about PLA because I'm running the DaVinci 1.0A and apparently that has the upgraded stock hot end to allow it to print PLA. Um, I haven't tried printing PLA with this. It's not my intention to print PLA. Although PLA is pretty good and I can get it for the same price as ABS from um, my supplier, which is printme3d.com. They do one kilogram spools for about £18. And, and they're in London, England, so I can get them next day, which is pretty cool. But my intention is to use different kinds of material on this thing. I'm not trying to just do PLA. I'm not trying to do just ABS. I want to use the color fab stuff. I want to use the the bronze fill and the, maybe even the carbon fill. That would be pretty awesome, making some carbon fiber printed parts. But you can't do that with the stock DaVinci XYZ um, extruder because it's made of brass. And apparently the carbon fill and the brass, the bronze fill, damage the nozzle quite badly. So... You've got to be a little bit careful. You've got to be able to change the damn thing. Where the E3D, you can buy a stainless nozzle for it or you can buy replacement brass ones. So that's not an issue. The one thing that is going to be a problem is you're going to lose the bed level, the auto calibrate. Un unless I can kind of figure out how to modify the Repetier firmware to change the coordinates and, and kind of figure out how the electrical contract works. And then I'll just use the E3D nozzle to, to probe the points and then use the the Z offset in slicer to, to adjust for it. But that's that's way, way down the line at the moment. We'll just stick with phase two, print these parts out, buy your fixings, and we're ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah. And I would level the bed at this point as well. Just get the bed level so that you're happy with how it's leveled. And then when you tear the carriage out, you know that the bed's level, so there's not a lot to do to it. We're just going to have to do a, do a Z adjust. But, I mean, we're probably going to have to do some bed leveling anyway. But anyway, I've probably talked too much for this phase anyway. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Print the parts, buy the fixings, stay tuned for phase three. And as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Steve. Thanks for listening.